Per gram ice cube can slide without friction up and down a 34 degree slope. The ice cube is pressed against a spring at the bottom of the slope, compressing the spring 12 centimeters. The spring constant is 26 newtons per meter. When the ice cube is released, what distance will it travel up the slope before reversing direction? So here is our slope. And here is our spring and someone is holding that back with an ice cube on it there's our ice cube and they tell us that the the angle right here this angle is 34 degrees okay so now they tell us the mass of the, the ice cube is 64 grams, which is 0 0.064 kilograms. And they tell us the spring is compressed by 12 centimeters. So delta x is how far it's compressed, 12 centimeters in SI units, 0 0.12 meters is how far it's compressed. And our K, our spring constant, is 26 newtons per meter. Now I'm going to write out our conservation of energy equation. We have 1 half mv initial squared plus mg delta y plus 1 half kx initial squared. And they tell us there's no friction, so I'm not going to bother with that equals one half mv final squared plus mgy final final plus one half kx final squared now let's go through and cancel out what we don't need initially the block is at rest or the ice cube is at rest it's smashed all the way up so all of the energy that we have is in spring potential energy so we have no kinetic energy and we're at y equals zero, so there's no pot gravitational potential energy. So like I said, all of the energy that we're starting out with is all in the spring. Then we wanna know how far it can go up until it slides to the very top and then stops and then starts to come back down. So our final velocity is gonna be zero. We will have a change in our delta y, so that will stay in the equation. But now our spring isn't compressed anymore, so that's zero. So let's rewrite what we have now. So we have 1 half kx initial squared equals mgy final. So now we want to know what the change of the change of y is. So if we divide both sides of the equation by mg, we've isolated delta y. So let's rewrite that. So one half kx or kx initial squared divided by mg equals the change in y. So now let's plug it in and see what that gives us. So we have 1 half times k of 26 newtons per meter times how far the spring was initially compressed, which we said is 0.12 meters, 0 0.12 meters. And that's all over the mass of the ice cube, which is 0 0.064 kilograms times gravity of 9.8. So that gives us a delta y of 29.847 centimeters. What the number that will actually pop out of your calculator is 0 0.29847 and that is meters. So let's think about this. I'm going to redraw our little picture here. So we just figured out that our ice cube will travel a delta y of 29.847 centimeters.
But the question wants to know how far up the slope it'll go before reversing direction. So you're gonna, you might be tempted to plug in that 29.847 and it's gonna tell you it's wrong because that is our change in y. But they wanna know how far up the slope it is. So we need to use some trigonometry. So we have 29.847 is opposite with respect to our 34. So we're gonna use sine. So we have sine of our angle, which is 34, equals our opposite, which is 29.847 centimeters divided by the hypotenuse. But we want the hypotenuse. So if we times both sides by the hypotenuse, we get h sine 34 equals 29.847 centimeters. And then we divide both sides by sine 34, sine of 34 degrees, gives us in centimeters a hypotenuse or how far the ice cube goes is 53.375 centimeters. So rounded is 53 centimeters. So we just figured out with that spring compressed that far, it's gonna shoot that ice cube up 53 centimeters before it stops and then turns back around.